Landlords are getting hammered. They're not making as much money as before. Renters are starting to get concessions. You know, it starts off with like some free digital gift cards and then it started transitioning to like maybe like discounted parking. And then they started doing like maybe a lower deposit fee to straight up like a couple months of free rent. Renters are starting to get concessions from landlords. Renters are winning, landlords are losing. This is what we're seeing here. And look at this, right? We have a lot of tenants right now feeling more powerful than ever before. We got a tenant here found like this ocean facing two bedroom apartment in Virginia Beach. It was $2,100 a month. The rent was lower than she expected. The landlord even cut the security deposit by $1,000. Says that this year is totally different. And finally, for once, renters catch a break because it used to be renters pretty much get destroyed in the rental market. Landlords hike up rents double digit percentages all the time with little to no concessions, but now there's more concessions than ever before. If you look at some of these units in Austin, Texas, for example, the amount of housing construction is off the charts. And you could thank home developers for lowering the prices for you because home developers at first wanted to build a bunch of homes and jack up the price and just make a lot of money. But literally they know that high interest rates when it has stayed for several months, people really go broke. I mean, some of the highest paying jobs in the US are being laid off, which are the tech and finance jobs. And people don't really have enough money to buy these houses. So housing prices go down in Austin by 10% in the past 12 months, rents dropped. And in a lot of places like even Salt Lake City, Utah, we got 40% of all of these apartments offering some sort of concessions with one of the most popular ones just being a month of free rent, which is incredibly big for renters who a lot of them live paycheck to paycheck. So having like one or two months free really makes them save a lot of money. Look at this, fall in Airbnb listings also spark housing market crash fears. This is a big one because Airbnb, everyone thought was impossible to go down in price, right? People initially thought that if you bought any sort of Airbnb property in a vacation location, you're gonna be making a lot of money. But now people start noticing no matter how much they cut in price in Airbnbs, they still lose money. I mean, look at the Hamptons, for example. Look at the amount of homes cutting prices, 650 down to 415, two grand down to a little over $1,000. You know, 500 down to 400, 430 down to 280, you get the idea. There's a lot of units right now having some of the fattest price cuts and the Hamptons are just one really good example. If you go to places like Miami, if you go to places like Orlando, these are very hot short-term rental locations, right? They always have visitors all the time, but when you have so much competition on the market, a lot of these units just simply go bankrupt. They go foreclosure. If they try to sell it on the used market, they get outcompeted by new construction because who offers the lowest interest rates? New construction properties. So yeah, these Airbnb units are a little bit screwed unless they could try to do long-term rentals. They can't really survive in this market. And many short-term rental landlords don't wanna do long-term rentals because long-term rentals don't make you any money because they, a lot of these guys bought these properties at the top just for Airbnb. And the only way for these properties to not go to foreclosure is to have consistent short-term rental income. But a lot of these units are not having that. If you check out some of the statistics here, it's actually pretty frightening. A viral tweet, right? Look at this. You got the city in Tennessee, 47% drop in revenue. Check this one out. Phoenix, Arizona, 47% drop in revenue as well. Phoenix is pretty interesting due to the fact that when they hosted a Super Bowl event during the weekend, half of all the houses were empty, which is kind of frightening considering that it's one of those really big American events that you would expect every single house to be filled up because there's so much competition, they can't fill everything up. And by the way, Airbnb even announced that they made 19% increase of revenue compared to last year, which is great. Means a lot more people are using Airbnb than a few years ago, but there's so many properties on the market. These guys are literally fighting each other tooth and nail just to get you money. I mean, that's pretty insane. If you check out some of the vacation hotspots like Nashville, 39% drop, Myrtle Beach, 45% drop, Seattle, Panama City, Orlando, each dropping a little over 30%. And we got some pretty wild stores in Orlando, right? Orlando got like, you know, the Disneyland, all that kind of stuff. But guess what happens? 
you got people buying Airbnb properties just 10 minutes away from Disneyland. Generally, these properties are easily rented out. But we got Bloomberg articles coming out saying how these landlords literally only rent out three to four nights every single month. That's barely any money. I mean, I don't even think it could cover like the property tax and the utilities with that money. And this is getting kind of scary here. And by the way, the whole new construction thing just torpedoed Austin rents. If you look at the Austin market, every single one of these little house dots do not represent a single house. They represent a whole entire community of homes. Yes, you heard that right. Each one of these dots pretty much advertise 10 to sometimes 100 different homes. And they're all new construction. Look at this, right? If you type in the Zillow thing, 5,000 results for new construction homes. But when you look at old construction homes and new construction homes combined, it's almost 12,000. Meaning new construction homes in Austin are taking up roughly 45 to 48% of all the inventory, which is not normal, by the way, because in history, new construction makes up less than 15% on average per city, not 50%, which is pretty crazy to see. So yes, new construction is taking down Austin rents. And Miami is next because everyone keeps talking about how good Miami real estate is. Well, get ready for Armageddon because we're going to be seeing a lot of new construction. Places like Brick Hill, Miami Beach, and even some of the more suburban areas are having more new construction than ever before. And a lot of this new construction comes at a big price with insane price cuts and developer discounts, which is causing the other properties around Miami to go down in price. So yeah, it's not really looking so great. In fact, many of these properties are offering some extremely steep discount, discounts. Imagine living in Brick Hill, you know, 1,100 square feet, two bed, two bath, already a few price cuts. High-end skyscraper, by the way, $545,000. During the peak, half a million dollars for a unit this caliber was unheard of. Now they're selling for a little over half a million. And in fact, you could probably get this down to like 480 or 470 if they really want to sell because there's just so much competition and we're already seeing a lot of these prices dropping like a rock. Used to be very expensive, now it's getting very, very cheap. And yes, it's having a population increase. And yes, having a lot of companies moving here. But when you have this much building, it really destroys a lot of the property prices. So South Florida has been the site of some epic real estate collapses, but there's gonna be a lot more room for that. And South Florida has developed a reputation as like the Wall Street of the South, you know, the new Silicon Valley. But it's not as hot as people think it is. Now, landlords are taking massive beatings. Landlords in the Airbnb industry are taking massive losses. And landlords in cities, which traditionally made a lot of money after the pandemic, are also losing money. So all these things are pretty bad. And I think 2024 is about to get even worse. So thanks for watching, guys. Comment below, like, comment, and subscribe for more.